Welcome back crew and after a pretty hard fought P16 at week one in Australia we get ready to head to Bahrain for our first night race of the season. And jump into our messages see what's going on it looks like uh, we have one of our developments fail already. First two our arrows are in but our chassis upgrade does not and it looks like we're gonna have a dry weekend. I'm going to take a peek through, see how we're doing. Yep, there's the rear floor under tray. We are one of the are the only team to make upgrades this uh, this week, so we do kind of catch a little bit up on the pack. Um, but our main goal is basically to continue to improve. After P16 last week, I want to try and, and better that position. Now, we do have a team goal that is to come 14th and this is our last race on the current contract to get to it so we would get a nice payout if we're able to reach that so that's going to be our stretch goal for today's race so we uh spend the extra points we repurchase the upgrade that won't come again till next week but we'll go ahead and jump into qualifying Bahrain qualifying is nearly upon us, and the drivers look as if they're all geared up to go. I expect we'll be getting underway very shortly. And I'm here, of course, with Anthony Davidson on what has turned out to be a very pleasant day indeed. No weather to interfere, no problems on the track, so absolutely no room for error. That's right, Crofty. It's looking good out there at the moment. Each team will have their own game plan for this session. And of course, once the cars leave the garage, they'll be under Park Fermi conditions. So any last minute adjustments need to be done right here and now. Beyond that, it's all up to the driver. Who can keep their tyres in the right temperature? Who can hit their apexes? No race fuel on board these days, of course. These are the fastest cars we've had in a long, long time. And it's right here in qualifying where they're at their absolute peak. Let's get started. All right, and here we are okay, after uh, practice sessions and made a couple of tweaks and uh, adjustments to the setup. We are going to head out of the pit lane and jump in for our first flying lap in qualifying one. Now, hopefully, if we can get a, get above uh, 15th, we'll jump into Q2, but seeing as our expected qualifying positions for this team are 19th and 20th, it's going to be a bit of a stretch to get there. Bahrain circuit is a fun circuit under the lights. Some pretty good DRS followed by hard braking zones make for some good overtake zones. It does have a, a few pretty tricky corners though. They're very changing radius. There's these kind of high speed S sections that for this one has that nice downhill drop. You lose a lot of feel and traction. And again, elevation changes into a hairpin accelerating up a hill you get a little bit of wheel spin out of that corner and probably one of the trickiest corners on the circuit which you have to kind of trail break that shallow corner and get hard on the brakes to get on that hairpin you can really make up a lot of time by exiting well off that corner uh, especially in the races Now on the inside of this right hander, you want to stay away from that curb. The elevation change in the sharp curb is a recipe for spinning your car. And another one of those strange kind of trail brake corners there. It's a very kind of weird technical circuit. But it's fun. It's got some long straights. Definitely plays into uh, the power circuit. So hopefully our Mercedes power plant will give us a hand. and. Now it says we've crossed in P5, but we're the one of the first cars out on the track, so here we are jumping in, throwing on a new set of tires. We tried to go for a second flying lap and we kind of busted up our wing, but as time rolls through we have dropped down the grid. So we're going to throw down a second set of tires and we've jumped towards the end of Q1 and set a new lap. And uh, jumps to P15, and that's our last run of the session. But as we uh, take a look at the post qualifying, everybody puts in times at the end, and this time we out qualify our teammate 
P19 on the grid. So second to last coming off the back end of the field. Curtain rises once more then on the desert stage of Sakir as the players take their places for the opening act. Will they enthrall us like they did in 2014 with that titanic battle between Nico Rosberg and Lewis Hamilton? Well, we'll find out shortly as we get underway here in Bahrain. There's no shortage of passing opportunities around the 3.36 miles of the Bahrain International Circuit with the best at turn one, of course, and then another soon into turn four. 15 corners here, six to the left and nine to the right. And we can see one or two flat spots into the tight left-hander of turn 10. A warm welcome to Anthony Davidson, who's beside me in the commentary box today. Let's talk about old timer. As with all the drivers at this level, they have a lot of ambition, but Formula One's a daunting step up from any other series, so expectations are hot right from the start. And this is something that has ended the career of many a young driver, as that leap up to Formula One proves to be too much. But luckily in this case, I'd say they're doing a good, solid job, and the risk the team took in signing them is definitely starting to pay off. With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. An immense lap from Lewis Hamilton yesterday puts him on pole position with Charles Leclerc alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Bottas, Verstappen, Sebastian Vettel, and Gasly, Faber, Perez, Ricardo, and Devon Butler. Albon, Magnussen, Carlos Sainz, and Norris, Stroll, Grosjean, Kimi Raikkonen, and Nico Hulkenberg. Old timer and George Russell ends our grid lineup. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. So here we are on the grid under okay, the lights. Here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me Grand down. Prix. Here we are. Checking out our race strategies. Got some tough choices to make. Um, kind of peeking between the personalized and projected. The personalized is based on some of the practice programs you do and how it how it handles your tire wear situations there. So we're going to take a peek and see where we go. It looks like we're going to go ahead and stick with the medium to hard just because of the tire wear that we had in Australia and there's a lot of slow corners. But here we go. Off to the start of this race and that tight hairpin of turn one is going to be an action point as George Russell gets off the line a bit better than us, a little better traction. We look down the inside and as this field kind of bunches up, we're going to go ahead and stick our nose way down in there. As much like last race we are gonna probably lose ground on the race pace so the more we can put people behind us in the early stage the better so we have a little bit of a pushing and shoving with Hulkenberg early on as we go three wide through those first couple of corners we're gonna settle in and try and make a couple of moves as we get to this technical second second sector of this course Here we are looking down the inside of Grosjean as we again get our elbows out. He's not giving us space around the corner, so we're not going to give him too much space. Again, we're parked around the outside. This is not a corner you really want to be overtaking around the outside in, so we back out and get ready to switch back and try and get him on the next straight. He covers us off on the inside, so we're going to swing to the outside as we get ready to hit the braking zone. And we stick it around the outside, but we are getting word from our engineers right there as you see the damage screen flash up. We have a rear wing issue. Let's see what it's going to be. DRS will be offline. There's a fault with the rear wing system. Stay out. We can work on a fix remotely. All right. Our DRS is currently offline. Now, luckily, DRS isn't enabled till lap three, so that gives our pit crew and our engineering team to work on the electrical issue and the sensor issue over a couple laps and here we are jumping to lap four our team actually did get the DRS system fixed but we are under attack from Grosjean so we guard down the inside and swing to the outside right before the braking zone and head him off coming into turn one and two 
It looks like he's going to have another look at us coming down the second straight. But he's still just a little too far back, so we're able to hold him off through that sector. He doesn't really get a run on us. As we continue to get into a nice, long, protracted battle with Roman Grosjean. He tended to be on our tail for a lot of this race. And it was quite the fun battle to be having with him. Here we are shooting into that tough left-hander and again we get a little better traction out of the corner as you see that gap grow but as we get a little further down the straight his less down less downforce and less drag through that drs system is going to help him reel us in a little bit more but again that first first corner was only his his real only major attack at us we kind of hold ground throughout this next couple of corners as we get ready to head down the front straight again. Coming into the final corner. One last major braking zone before we get to jump on the long, long straight and the run down into turn one. So we jump ahead to the end of lap six. We're doing one more stop today. One stop left in our strategy. We're leading our teammate by 4.3 seconds. And we are starting to catch the train ahead of us, which is something I wasn't really expecting us to do, but, you know, after coming P16 in the last race, we are hunting for that P14 bonus. And if we can get ahead of some of the members of this train, that'll be good news for us in that regard. But as you can see, Grosjean is still following right behind us and every time we have to move to defend from one of his lunges we lose a bit of a little bit of pace a little bit of time and that train gets a little further ahead of us but we're just kind of continuing to run our own race running our low ERS settings right now to just kind of recharge the battery since we're not under attack and take a peek at our tire wear as we get closer and closer to our pit stop, that we will be going on to the hard compound attire. Again, only doing a one stop this race, as a, a lot of teams seem to be doing towards the back of the field, since we are able to start on the medium tire and not the softs that higher qualifying teams uh, need to take having gotten through Q2. So now one thing I did learn as I was doing the practice programs and one thing I did during the uh, Bahrain practices is you have your race pace simulation as Grosjean looks to the inside of us, pulls alongside, we're going to give him a little bit of space coming across, he kind of hops over the curbing, so he loses his pace out of the corner, but as I was saying, we were, by doing the race pace uh, test, it kind of looks at your fuel consumption and tire wear over those three to five laps. See what you're doing. Now, I ran it running in the high rev fuel uh, fuel mixture. Now, what that had the effect of was it calculated my fuel consumption as if I was running in the rich mix the whole time. So after a few laps, I found that I, even running in standard, my fuel target was increasing. So I was able to run a lot of this race in the rich mixture because I was carrying a little bit of extra fuel. Now that's not super healthy for the engines, but we're going to be taking grid penalties anyway, so I figure let's burn it up and go hard. Right, we think the car behind might start to have fuel management issues. Let's see if we can use this to our advantage over the next few laps. Fantastic. After being under attack for the better part of eight laps by Grosjean, we'll see if that fuel issue that he has actually comes into play and allows us to start chasing down this field. As you see, team starting to peel off Raikkonen first in the pits. He's going for an undercut. We'll see if it works on him as Norris and Devin Butler scrap just ahead of us. Now them battling back and forth allows us to reel them in as we get ready to head into the next braking zone. 
for hard on the brakes. And there we go. Catching right up to the back end. We'll almost certainly be in DRS range down the next straight. So here we are. And oh, we have to lock up. We have a near miss with Lando Norris. And his rear wing is he was a little softer into the braking zone than we were. So we have to swing it wide and lose it. And well, the extra heat in the tires just doesn't make those tires happy. So we have another lock up. As Grosjean looks to dive under us, but luckily through the detection zone, we were close enough to pick up DRS down this straight. So straightening out our exit and getting back on the power allows us to put Grosjean back behind us as he's again still dealing with those fuel issues. And here we are getting caught in some dirty air through that next braking zone, causing another lockup. Super not good for those tires. Quick word on the tires. They look okay for now, but we can see the wear. Certainly start too soon. Just be careful. And there's Jeff telling us to watch our tires as we lock up once again. Because our tires we're are the pit window. You'll be overheating the and we're causing some trouble at, through these braking zones. As Norris looks to the inside of Butler, we're going to look to see if we can follow him through, but have a little bit of a touch with Butler, but he's able to squeeze us out. So unfortunately, not able to make up that position but we are going to continue chasing after this group the more they fight the more we have a chance to stay with them here we are down to the next hairpin try and reel them in get a good exit now we want to be able to come through this next tight left-hander as close on the tail of them as possible so we can make good use of this DRS zone. It's not very long, but if you've positioned yourself well, you can get a good run into this next braking zone and try and be brave through that corner. But we're just a little too far back as we jump on the power and turn through this really quick right-hander followed by that hard braking zone. Now that fast right-hander coming up the hill on softer compounds and lighter fuel loads, you're actually able to take that pretty flat out as you use the downforce, but of course in a race situation, as your tires come off and you're carrying more fuel, it's definitely an area you have to lift through and you're tempted to cut that gap and uh, get up on the curb. But like I said earlier, it's a very dangerous curb to be on. As Butler gets through Norris and we have a little bit of contact. Just a little brush, but luckily we haven't done too much damage to our front wing. But it's been a tough, tough battle with this group. And that's allowed Grosjean, even with his fuel issues, to stay in touch with this pack. So hopefully we can manage to get by and get a little clear air to run in. But it seems like this back of the field is actually fairly well bunched up and is a decent little train we've got going here. Here we are down that rear straight one more time. Just kind of using the DRS to keep in range of this group is our tires are starting to fall off. We're having some wheel spin issues out of these slow corners. So we're having to uh, kind of baby our tires a bit. But we're going to jump ahead to the end of lap 12 as we hop into the pits for the first time. getting back up to speed and then breaking into this very tricky right-hander coming out of the pits. And here we are jumping to the start of lap 14 and passing our teammate coming out of the pits and you see Butler coming out of the pits right ahead of us. And then also we see 
one of the Ferraris, Vettel, is out. A mechanical failure trims the grid by one. As we try and chase down Devin Butler, who went for the overcut on us. And it looks like Lando is in the pits this lap as well. So he went for yet another lap of overcut on us. Green flag. And at this point, as we wait for the pit cycles to kind of shake out, it's really just a matter of putting our head downs, putting in some good laps, but while conserving the tires as much as we can, we want to have that extra grip when we're in battles with our opponents there. Because Butler's going to have a tire life advantage on us, as is Lando. If you think you can get past, increase ERS deployment to overtake mode. Well, of course I'm going to try to get past Jeff. I'm just not close enough. So here we go. We are within DRS range. We're going to try and make a run. You can see that orange dot coming out of the pit straight. And you see him exiting right next to us. It makes for a very tricky, tricky turn one. Ideally, we wanted to seconds. jump to the inside of Butler and try and outbreak him in that hairpin. But having Lando Norris there coming out meant we had to really adjust our line. Now we were able to jump just ahead of Norris as we came through that quarter, able to get on the accelerator a little bit better coming out of that tight hairpin since he was taking that tighter inside line. But it's basically cost us part of our run at Devin Butler. So here we are as Lando's all over our back bumper. Even though we don't really have a bumper, I guess. As we do as much as we can to try and get past Devin Butler here. So once again, we have DRS. We're getting a little run, but not quite enough. So we're going to get on the brakes early and get slowed down and turned into this corner nice and early. And try and get back on the accelerator so we can chase him down. We're going to increase our ERS deployment as we get ready to head down this next long straight and see if we can make a run. Lando's got a better exit out of that corner than as he tries to get up alongside of us. So we're going to give him room in that corner as he gets down the inside. But again, he is just lurking right in that mirror. We both have DRS now coming in as I try and dive down on Butler. Norris is looking to the right of us. So we're going to have to go around the outside of Butler. Where Norris slots in, opting for that instead of going three wide. But we go around the outside of Devin Butler. And jump on to the next straight with a little bit of a lead. And we take that next apex a little bit slowly to try and bunch him up behind us. So we try and keep him in our rear view. Now we jump ahead all the way to lap 17 as you now see Grosjean coming out ahead of us. He has successfully performed an overcut on us, and it would appear that also his fuel issues seem to be fixed. But here we are back in a battle, and he is that 14th position that we want to try and chase down. If we can complete that team goal, that's a big chunk of research and development points that we need, especially as a backmarker team, to try and get our car better and better and capturing some of these other teams so we go in deep we've overcooked that corner and that is really bad news for us burns up a little bit of the traction of the tires heats it too much and now we've got to try and chase down Grosjean again who showed earlier in the race before his fuel issues that he had very good pace ahead of us so if we're not able to keep in touch with him it's going to make that kind of stretch goal of 14th position real tough to manage. We think the car behind might be struggling with fuel issues. See if you can increase the gap. Jumping to lap 19 now. 
Coming to the last corners as Norris takes a look around the outside of us. He's gotten by Devin Butler thanks to his fuel issues, but Butler has closed back up on the gap there. So looks like whatever issues he was having have been uh, resolved. Again, Norris looking through a braking zone at us one more time as he gets a little side by side with us. We hold him off, keep the position, and get ready to head through the couple of slow corners and quick, quick traction zones that you really have to be careful of. But you will absolutely chew up your tires if you are not careful through these sectors. So we're up into 14th now. It looks like, according to the mini-map, we had a red dot behind our grouping and a yellow dot. So that would look to be probably one of the Alfa Romeos, which is kind of expected. It might be Kimi Raikkonen. He had a very early pit stop. It's likely his tires have kind of fallen off. And then a, a Renault behind us, which is usually more of a, an upper midfield car but it would seem that they have some issues. So we are in that very, very hopeful 14th position right now. Our gap to the car in front is 7.4 so We're seconds. under attack from Devin Butler and really it comes down to us trying to defend this position for the last portion of this race to hold this off. So we are going to try and get our teammate involved in this kind of scrap as Butler gets through us. Finally, after fighting, fighting up, oh, and there he goes. And Lando is also going to take his opportunistic time as we're a bit offline with Butler getting past us, but we managed to hold him up. So we really need to get Devin Butler back. We need to get back past him to get that 14th position pass. Now, granted, 15th position would be an improvement over last race, and at this stage in our career, we're, we're looking for improvements, but we want those R&D points. We want that, that extra grid position up. And with a, another DNF, so there's only 18 running cars, it's, that's what we want. We want to take advantage of these cars missing from the grid. Here we are pumping up to a rich fuel mix and burning as much ERS as we can. These straights are really our best shots to get by him. We're in DRS range. We've got a good, strong exit on him. And as we burn all that extra hybrid energy, he looks to defend off the inside, but he doesn't even stand a chance as we get past him well before the braking zone. We're going to go ahead and stay in this high ERS range just to get some good good traction off the exits, some good pace down this next straight and try and open up a little bit of a gap to him. But he's not going away lightly. So here we are jumping to Captain lap 23. And this train has stretched out a little bit as Devin Butler uses that DRS to close back up on us. We uh, jump into the next straight one more time, and he's got a great exit as he swings through us into the braking zone, locks up a bit, and he goes deep, and we have to swing wide in order to avoid him, and that really compromises our line, and Lando tries to, again, get past us through this sector, but it's just not a great overtake zone until you get to the hairpin. So you're able to squeeze out your opponents because you hold the racing line, and they have to back off, but once again, Butler gets past us again, and we are in pursuit mode one more time to try and get that position back.
Now through this middle technical section, we drop our ERS deployment down to the low setting. We lose a little bit of time on the straights, but it's so twisty and turny that that's how we got it. What we got to do to recharge our battery so we have enough deployment to really open it up down the second to last straight and the main straight. So here we are in DRS range, but Lando Norris once again getting a good run on us, getting by us as we are. Falling down the grid, and now we are back to 16th. If we have a touch with Norris, and we bust off our right front wing end plate. We do some damage to ourselves. We kind of shunted Norris out of our out of our way. He took a little late corner adjustment. I thought he was going to continue to swing past, but he straightened out his line, and we kind of just turned into him. So this wing damage is going to be a problem for us. Especially uh, as you see that right front locking up, the less downforce means less weight on that tire and it's a lot easier to lock it up. So now we're going to have to be a lot more tentative into the braking zones. And especially as we head through this next sector and that high speed up the hill left right, we, we lose, and lose some downforce and we understeer pretty hard through those corners. So we have to lift a lot in order to keep ourselves from running right off the track as you see just how much we have to lift almost fully off the throttle heading through that right hander as we are on the edge of grip there we want to keep our tires from understeering we don't want to burn up the tires any more than we have to so at this stage with the damage about five laps left to go butler is going to pull away from us and we really don't have much of a chance to catch him up so we are doing everything we can to hold our 15th position and improve from week one's P16 result. So what we're going to do now is as we head into a lot of these slow corners, we are going to try and involve our teammate a little bit in the battle. We're going to break just a little bit harder. We're going to wait just a little bit longer on the apex of the low speed corners to slow up Norris so he has to basically tuck in behind us he's not gonna have enough time off the straights to really get by us but we want to let George Russell get involved and get on the gearbox of Norris so hopefully he can squabble with him a bit and hold him up because we're gonna need to pull out all the stops all the tricks that we can to keep him back behind us for our P15 because if we drop to P16, I will see it as as a loss. As a we only had one retirement in the Australian GP, so we were three up from the last car running. If we drop to 16th here with two retirements, essentially we will be two from the last running. Which is not a position we want to be in. But here we go. Norris looks to the outside. We go defensive down the inside, try and hold him off through that corner, and we're able to swing back and control that corner. So now we are going to have to do our best defensive look. We're going to let him get down the inside as this being a right-left combo here. He's going to have the inside on that hairpin, but as we get on the accelerator, it will give us the inside of the corner. And here he goes diving down the inside of us again. We give him a little bit of space, but our wider line allows us to get on the power earlier. But our tires are starting to feel somewhere and burn up a bit. So it's going to be even tougher for us to keep him behind us. We really need our teammate to do some help to us to get involved in this battle as much as he can as once again it's very tight through that corner but we managed to get on the power a little earlier and pull a little bit of a gap coming down that straight now this is an area where we typically gain some time again this tight high speed s section but with that wing damage 
It's not our best suit, so it doesn't set us up well for these long two straights. We're very, very vulnerable in those two positions. As Norris tucks into the slipstream on us, he isn't going to close us down quite enough, but he's going to be in a great position coming down the main straight at us. As he's got the overspeed, we are having to put as much ERS deployment as we can as we move to cover his look to the inside, swing back to the outside of the braking zone. And there he is holding down the inside as we try and hold the outside from him. A little bit of a lockup coming into the corner. But once again, we cover him off. And at this stage, we're just kind of counting down the laps. Every lap that we can keep him behind us is a plus. And you see again in the Recap slow section, we drop down seconds. to the low ERS deployment, try and charge the battery up as much as we can to utilize the top two modes down those quick straights. So here we are, jumping ahead. We've managed to keep him right behind us. The last lap of the race. He looks to the outside. We tried to cover him off, but he actually managed to jump us, jump ahead enough a little bit. We actually have a little bit of a touch and a lock up into that corner. But again, we're holding him off. This has been a huge battle taking up the almost the entire latter half of the race as we continue to fight with Lando Norris. As you can see, Lewis Hamilton has won. The fireworks are already going off. We are midway through the second sector, so we've still got work to do, even as the leaders are already celebrating. So here we are in the last couple of corners. One of the last DRS straights, and we get a great exit compared to him. We get by, create a little bit of a gap, but again, he's going to reel us in as this sector really hurts us. As we're careful not to understeer off the track. We're careful on the brakes. Try and slow him up into the corner a little bit. Get on early and use our maximum deployment modes. We steam down the straight. We have only a couple percent left. We're gonna swap it down to try and get some recharging into the brake zone. And this is it, we're gonna burn everything we have left to keep him behind us so he doesn't get a run on us and we managed to hold it off and finish p15 in the bahrain gp and there we go we've improved by one position we didn't quite hit our stretch goal of that 14th place so unfortunately we're going to get a team goal failure and that's going to cost us anthony davidson how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today I think a large part of the result comes down to temperament. They were able to keep their heads when everyone around them was losing theirs. And that's allowed them to get the best out of the car, to maximize the strategy, and to stay out of trouble. After an excellent performance at the Grand Prix, I'm sure there'll be plenty of celebrations tonight amongst the Mercedes team. And they certainly deserve it. Let's see what effect this result has had on the driver's standings. It's a great result for Lewis Hamilton, who moves further ahead at the top of the table. After an incredible day of racing, who was your driver of the day, Ant? Carlos Sainz certainly wasn't someone to scoff about. To follow race strategies throughout with pinpoint precision has to be commended. It's time to check out the constructors' standings. Mercedes moved to the top of the table. Another team that will be satisfied with this Grand Prix is Alfa Romeo, whose good result moves them further up the championship. Well, Ant, an end to another fantastic weekend of racing. Thanks to everyone who joined us, and we'll see you for the next one.
Good day today. Let's have your take on it. You and Devon weren't far apart by the end of the race. How evenly matched are you? You were cutting your way through the field during the race. You're breaking all expectations. What's your secret? Appreciate your time. Thank you for joining me once again as we get ready to head to Shanghai for the 1,000th GP in Formula One history. We'll see if we can make an impact there and see what we can do research and development wise heading in. I'll catch you next time. Quimby out.